Well, we're here today to um, push the boundaries of fine milling a little bit further. The problem we've got is that the tungsten tips wear down fairly quickly um, and although it's given an acceptable finish, we, we've always looked to see if we can do anything better here at Powerplane. And when um, Element 6 uh, offered us a diamond tool, um, we've researched that and the diamond tools, although tremendously expensive, um, do not wear, so they retain their shape. The rest of the world is not convinced and they haven't been very successful in concrete because of the hardness and the material in it. But because with fine milling you're only cutting five, ten millimetres deep, we thought it would be well worth a go. And to that end we trialled it with a small machine on the M25 um, and three nights work there didn't even touch uh, a diamond tool. So we've invested uh, a lot of time and effort with Element 6. We now have 700 tools and have put it in a two metre drill. We've developed uh, the polycrystalline uh, diamond, which we call our D-Power. Uh, that's been used now throughout the world. We've done probably 25,000 square metres worldwide. And we have using that technology in the last year to help develop the tool for this concrete texturing application. So this is Semex's uh, National Technical Centre uh, at Southam and this is where they've already trialled uh, the use of roller compacted concrete. Um, so we've got uh, a fair old area to go at. Um, the biggest problem with roller compacted concrete is the level control when it's going in 200 millimetres thick and also whether you need to finish it to uh, give it some anti-skid or, or put something over the top. Fine milling is an answer. Um, fine milling with diamonds we think will improve that. Um, so that's why we're here. This, this concrete is, uh, has been tested at 70 newtons, so uh, it's not soft concrete. Um, some of it's got hard grit stone in, some of it's limestone, and, and we're here to, to re-level it, reprofile it and put a finished texture in it. Um, the thinking behind the diamonds is because the tip stays the same that we always get the same groove and we always get a consistent finish um, and, and that is the way forward as far as we're concerned at the moment. After, after three metres of carbide you get the texture, it starts off as a pencil point, after three metres then you end up with a crayon and worse than that it just is completely bull nosed. With a diamond pick, you're keeping the profile and that height difference from the, from the tool holder to the tip maintains throughout its life. The advantages are that it's a quicker system. Uh, working with this type of uh, Vulcan machine, uh, with the levelling technology that they've got, and working with a fine milling drum, you can achieve the same results or better results using this process than you can with conventional grinding. Um, against carbide, yes, it's more expensive, but with carbide you wouldn't get the texture. You would get it for three metres and then you'd be back to a rubbing situation as opposed to a cutting, crushing situation. At Powerplane, we've always kept abreast of the new technology. Vertgen always help us by giving us everything that they've got. But at the end of the day, it's down to us to improve what we do uh, and, and just try and keep ahead of the game and keep that one step forward. Our method of doing that is by investing in the newest technology and, and, and utilising it as we can. On concrete, as I say, it's early days yet. Um, these, the trials here today, which have been successful, are very encouraging. Um, once we see a decent sized project come up, uh, then we'll really, really be able to see the benefit of this system. At the moment, we're very pleased. It's a lovely finish. Um, I'm chuffed to bits with what, how it's gone. Uh, and I'm sure that Semex and uh, Connect Plus will uh, hopefully use it in the future.